Hello, this is Reza Rad. It's been more than like 12 years that since the first blog article I've written about Power Query, and I've realized that I never actually recorded a video about uh, introduction to Power Query, what it is, what things you can do in case you are a beginner in Power Query, uh, what are the things that this can provide for you. So this is the video that I'm going to give you some introduction about Power Query, uh, a very quick short example of that, how it works and how it might help you at your work in Power BI or any other places. Let's go and check it out. Uh, so, what is Power Query? Power Query is an engine uh, that is um, part of uh, usually other products in Microsoft uh, toolset uh, that usually work with data, things such as Power BI Desktop, uh, the Power BI website, Microsoft Fabric, um, Azure Analysis Services, Excel, uh, Power Platform, uh, products such as Power Apps. In most of these tools, you can use this engine to transform the data. Not only, the tra not only transform it, you can use it to get data from different places, uh, transform it while you are bringing it into that specific place that you are analyzing the data. Now, the example I'm going to show you is in Power BI Desktop, but we have similar uh, Power Query experience within uh, other tools, within Excel, within Microsoft Fabric, within Azure Analysis Services. Uh, the experience is very much the same. So let's go and check it how this works. Uh, so this is the screen that I have right now, and I'm going to show you uh, the Power Query experience in here. Uh, this is Power BI Desktop, uh, and I have this web page, which I want to use this as my sample source. So this is a web page that has the top 250 movies um, rated in IMDb website by, uh, uh, by people. I'm going to copy that and use that as a source in Power BI Desktop. In Power BI Desktop, you can use um, a lot of different data sources. You can get data from Excel, get data from many sources. This functionality is actually part of Power Query itself. When you say get data within Power BI Desktop, you are using the Power Query functionality. Uh, and there are like, mm, more than 200 data sources available that you can get data from. Uh, if I just click on more, you'll see a number of data sources available. I'll enable my zooming tool as well so that I can show it to you in a zoomed mode. Um, Okay, still waiting for this to come up. Yep, here it is. So uh, this experience that you see right now, this is part of Power Query uh, in Power BI Desktop. But we have similar to that in Excel, in other places as well. You can choose the source. Uh, in this case, because I'm uh, using a web source, so I'll basically just use web. Uh, no matter what source you use, you'll usually specify the credentials for that source, um, the address for it. For example, if it is a SQL Server, um, you are, um, you'll need to provide the server details and then the database name, username, password, all of that. This is a public web page I'm using. So the public web page wouldn't really uh, require any um, authentication, but if you are using a web API and that requires authentication, this would also support that kind of authentication process as well. Um, anyway, when Power Query connects to that data source, when Power Query Engine connects to that data source, first it will show you a preview of um, sources you have, a preview of data you have available in that source. If it was, for example, an Excel, um, uh, Excel file, you might have data in multiple sheets. So it would have given you a list of sheets that you have data in it. If it was a SQL Server database, you had list of tables, views in that database. In this case, because it is a web page source, it is a scanning that web page to find out all the um, all the uh, web uh, tables or anything similar to the table that structure over there. Uh, the reason this is slow is that I'm recording it from a hotel uh, internet connection. So internet connection is slow. Otherwise, Power Query is pretty fast in uh, detecting the data structure within a web page. Um, so I'll wait here a little bit so that this, uh, this checks that source for any data structure. It seems it is taking a little bit of time. 
Okay, here it is. Uh, so because it is a web page, it comes with different part of the page that might have different data in it. By clicking on any of these, it would give me like a preview of the data available in that, um, in that part of the web page. You can even go to the web view and see where this is coming from. Uh, in this case, just to keep things simple, I'm going to just select uh, table one. As you see, table one is not uh, structured properly. When I look at the data, the column names are not defined correctly. Um, the, um, there are some values that are combined, like for example, the rank and the title, all of those. So I'm going to actually prepare this data. And that is one of the things that Power Query is for. Power Query is not just for getting the data or connecting to a data source. It is also for transforming the data. Uh, it is not like SQL database scenario that you have to pull the data first and then apply some transformation. In here, you can actually apply transformation while you are bringing it in here. So instead of clicking on load, I'll go to the transform data. This is the place that would open a new window for me, uh, which is called Power Query Editor. If you use Power Query in Power BI Desktop, the Power Query Editor comes as a separate window. If you use Power Query um, inside a Power BI website, it comes as a Power Query Editor online, as a data flow experience. Uh, in different places, it comes slightly differently. The experience, however, mostly is um, pretty much the same. Uh, the transformations you can apply are mostly similar. Uh, this window that you see right now is appearing over here. This is called Power Query Editor. Uh, in Power Query Editor, I will be able to see the tables on the left-hand side. This is where uh, this is where I would see the list of tables. It might come from multiple data sources, one from Excel, one from SQL Server. Uh, in the middle section here, I would see a preview of data. This is a preview of data, not all the data. The reason that it is preview is that it would speed up the process of, uh, of working in this environment of Power Query Editor. Um, once you have applied your transformation and then you said close and apply this, it would run on the entire data set. Depending on which version of Power Query you use, preview might be different. Sometimes preview might be 1000 rows, sometimes 200 rows, sometimes 100 rows. Uh, at the top section, you see uh, most of the transformation options available. Uh, here, for example, you'll see some transformations, some of the common transformations, or if I go to transform tab, there will be a lot of transformations in each of these sections, which I'll show you some of these. And then on the right hand side, this is the place that we would see uh, the name of the current table uh, and some of the applied steps, which I'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's, um, the best way to learn it is to actually do some transformations with it. So here you see that my table names are not, uh, my column names are not correct. So I'm going to fix some of those things. For example, this column name, this is actually the rating value. So I renamed this just by double clicking on the column name itself. When you double click on the column name, you can rename it just like that. Or you can right click on a column and get transformations available on that column as well. Now let's say in this case I'm interested in rating. I would also want this one which is year. Um, I'm not interested in anything else, let's assume. Um, I mean we can keep some of these but I'm only interested in uh, this column, rating and year. So I can select these, co these uh, columns holding the control key and then right click on this and say remove other columns. So it will basically remove it from the view that I have here. Power Query is always read only process. Um, even if you connect to a Excel data source, even if you connect to a SQL Server data source, when you do actions like this, you are not removing it from that data source. You are only removing it from your view of that data. Uh, the next transformation I want to apply here is that the column names that you, uh, the column values that you see in this column are slightly strange. Here I have the uh, the title of the movie, but I also have the rank. This is the rank of the movie, the one before dot. I want to separate that, and there are different ways that I can separate this. One of the ways is using that dot as a delimiter. So what I can do is I can right click on this column and then say split column 
by delimiter, there are many different ways you can split a column by number of um, uh, characters and things like that. But in this case, I'll choose a delimiter. And then I would say, well, split column by delimiter. This is a dot as a delimiter. You can actually go and choose any of these delimiters or choose a custom and then type it in over there. Uh, and then you choose which, uh, like where do you want to split? Like if you want to split at every dot value that you see uh, within that uh, text, which I don't want to do that. I only want the first dot because that is where the rank is getting separated. So I would keep it as left most. And I wouldn't do anything in advanced uh, options. I just click on OK. So what happens is that this will find the first dot. Anything before that would be one column. Everything after that would be another column. And then it automatically detects that anything before dot, that column, all of the values are numeric values. So it automatically changed the data type of that column to numeric. When I click on this one, two, three as a header, you see that these are the data types within Power Query. And this is one of those um, data types. One, two, three basically means a, um, a whole number, which is correct. I'm going to double click on it and rename it to rank. And this column, I would just double click on it and rename it to title. Now, just in case title might have space, extra spaces before and after, uh, what I can do is I can right click on this column and then say transform trim. Trim will remove all the spaces before and after every, um, every text values. So after doing this, you'll see that little space that I had at the beginning of this is now removed and I don't have that space anymore, right? Uh, so as you see, the transformations in this environment are pretty easy. I don't even write a formula or code to, to do that transformation. Another thing that you, you notice here is that we have this like little green bar at the top of these columns. This is uh, giving you some information about the quality of the transformations and quality of the data that you have. If you have, for example, any error values, any blank values and things like that. Um, you also notice that with every um, transformations that I have applied on the right hand side, there is a section for applied steps uh, showing every one of these transformations. And even if that transformation is done automatically like that change type, uh, you can easily click on any of these and see the status of the data at that point of the time, which is quite uh, interesting. Like for example, if I click on this step, I would see the data as it was the very first instance that I get it from that source. Then what we did, we did some rename columns, uh, we removed extra columns that we didn't need, then we split it, uh, automatic change type happened, uh, the rename column, uh, again we did a rename column for the title column, and then trimmed. So all of these processes are stored as part of this whole thing. And that is one of the good things about Power Query, that uh, this is part of your solution. Every time you uh, come back to this environment, you'll have all of that process saved. And every time you refresh your data, all of these would run again the same as well. Uh, every one of these steps also have a little formula at the top. Here you see that formula. Uh, if this formula bar is not enabled by default in your Power Query editor experience, you can always go to the View tab and enable the formula bar tab, formula bar section. Uh, this is that formula bar. Uh, now you don't have to understand what this formula bar uh, is saying at first uh, because as we do the transformation, it automatically creates that uh, formula for you. This writes it there. This language for writing formula is called M. Uh, this language is a language that uh, you can uh, learn and I have separate videos about that. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to learn it, but it is something important and useful to learn because sometimes you can apply some transformations using this language where if you wanted to do it using graphical interface, it would have um, taken uh, more steps. Uh, but by the way, in the graphical interface, we have tons of different transformations available which you can use uh, on different uh, types of the data. If you want to see the entire script for this, you can right click on your table, go to advanced editor. This is the place that would, um, that would show you the entire M script for this, for this query. 
Um, so in this case, this is something like this. Now, if I copy this script and give it to someone else, if they create a new blank query and paste this over there, they would get exactly the same output, assuming that they have access to the same data source. Um, this script is what's happening behind the scene. This M script is what's happening behind the scene. So this is some transformations examples in Power Query Editor within Power BI Desktop. After you do your transformations, uh, you can save it so that it loads the data into the destination. In this case, because I'm using Power Query in Power BI Desktop, when I say close and apply, let me also rename this table, I would call it IMDB. Um, when I say close and apply, this would load that within Power BI desktop in my Power BI semantic model, whereas if I had this as a uh, Power BI data flows, it would have saved it as a CSV file. If I had it as a Microsoft Fabric data flow gen 2, I would have chosen destination to be lake house, warehouse. So you have different destinations options, but it is the same Power Query engine for all of this. This is the engine that you can use to transform the data and, um, and get the data prepared in the shape that you want uh, without needing to write so much transformations. When you do this, um, th these transformations on a relational database system, Power Query tries to convert your SQL, uh, convert your M script to a SQL script or something like that, that that uh, database system understands it. Uh, there are lots of details about Power Query, of course. This was just a very simple example of how, how this works, what it is. You can combine tables together. I have separate videos about what are different ways of combining tables together, what is merge, what is append. Uh, there are many things that can be applied using this as a um, as a data transformation. And as, as you see, this is slow again, is because of my um, hotel internet connection, not because Power Query is performing a slow with this amount of data. Power Query can perform a slow on really large amount of data, which there are workarounds for it, but not for this amount of data. Uh, and the data in this case is loaded exactly the format, the columns that I have specified in here. Uh, if I ever want to go back to that Power Query Editor experience, I'll go and click on Transform Data, and this would bring back the same Power Query Editor experience with all of the steps, all of the tables um, that I had over there, and I can continue transforming it. When you save your Power BI desktop, this Power Query would be saved as part of it. So you see all of these transformations uh, items are still there. Uh, so in short, Power Query is the engine for data transformation. It is a self-service engine. You don't need to have a developer background to work with it. You don't need to write code to work with it. Most of these are done through the graphical interface. It comes in different flavors. You, you can have it within Power BI Desktop, within Excel, within um, data flows in Power Query, uh, Power Query Editor Online. There are a lot of different experiences for it. Uh, no matter what data source you use, mostly there is a connector for that, um, and you can connect to it using Power Query, get data, transform it, and lo load it in the destinations you want. I have much more videos about different aspects of Power Query. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, which was specifically about like a very basic introduction to Power Query uh, and how to use it, how it can be useful for you. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.